Hi, Bearded Brushstrokes here. And I thought I'd take some time to talk to you guys about something other than gaming or painting or, uh, or rules stuff from, from board games or anything like that. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about mental health. Now one of the reasons that I started the blog over on Instagram is that I don't think that mental health is always presented in the best possible way. There's still a lot of stigma around it. I think it's often seen as a weakness of the person who's suffering. And I don't think that's fair. I also don't think that a lot of, uh, a lot of men talk about mental health, uh, particularly things like depression and things, for the same reason. Uh, it is quite often seen as sort of a weakness of the person and you know we're, we're taught as men not to be not to show weakness and that's that's not good because it's got to come out somewhere and quite often that is anger usually at the self and um, well that's not healthy either so I'm just going to sort of ramble for a little while I suppose about depression in particular we're going to talk about some of the definitions of uh, of depression and what somebody maybe means when they uh when they're feeling depressed and you know what it feels like because a lot of people don't understand and that's fine you can't understand really unless you've actually been through it uh, so i'm going to start as i say with some definitions and first of all we'll go with the dsm which is the uh the diagnostic uh, the tool that the uh, that medicine, you know, that, that psychiatrists use to categorise and help to uh, to understand the various differences between various uh, mental illnesses. Um, DSM-4 criteria for major depressive disorder. Depressed mood or a loss of interest or pleasure in daily activities for more than two weeks. Mood represents a change from the person's baseline. Impaired function, social, occupational, and educational. So, I think one of the uh, the, the really major things in there is that uh, we're looking at a loss of interest uh, or pleasure in daily activities for more than two weeks. So, it's not just sadness; it's more like the lack of joy. Uh, the the inability to to feel anything really a lot of the time. Okay, so that is the technical definition, broadly speaking. I've I've gone over it pretty quickly there. Um, a medical definition of uh, of depression. So if we have a look instead at dictionary.com. At the uh, the definition of the word depression, now. A few of these are uh, are specifically to do with actually pressing on things or economic principles and things. Um, I'm going to read out a couple specifically. So if you were to go to dictionary.com, type in depression and do a search, uh, results the, the result that comes up, definition number four, sadness, gloom and dejection. Now I would put money on the fact that that is the one the, the the one definition of depression that people usually think of, and um, that's the one that people are looking to cure when they say to you, "Cheer up." And the one that they don't understand when you turn when somebody with depression says, "I can't." You know, so that's the one that we we most often use, kind of the most colloquial use, I think. Uh, now in psychiatry, there's a condition of general emotional detect dejection and withdrawal, sadness greater and more prolonged than that warranted by any objective reason. Compare clinical depression. Okay, so, yeah, I think that's, that's a really nice colloquialised translation of the, uh, the dictionary.com definition there turning it into more common language uh, that that people might understand and we begin to see um the 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 detachment from 
the uh, the idea of just being sad and now it's a, a case of withdrawal and I'm going to talk to you in a little bit about why that's important and then finally so that was that was definitions four and five uh, in pathology a low state of vital powers or function uh, functional activity and that is number nine um, and again we're moving into sort of giving an idea of of, of what depression is about it's a, a lack of energy really um, so let me now we've looked at the the technical definition and the the dictionary definition I'd really like to talk to you a little bit about my definition and what it's like for me to be depressed and um, I'd like to to start by explaining how I got a diagnosis now I am as you might imagine running a uh, a blog about board games and, and cartoons and comics and all the stuff that uh, that I cover off on bearded brush strokes um, I'm a massive nerd okay if we look at my bookshelf there's uh, Pratchett there's uh, Abnett counter uh, these these are all authors who specialize in uh, in fantasy and science fiction and I, I have to admit I'm not very well read if I'm honest uh, I'm looking to, to sort that but um, around the bottom of my bookcase or the shared bookcase because Mrs Bush, Brushstrokes has taken up a lot of it as well and she's got an awful lot of fantasy books uh, I'm looking forward to, to getting the opportunity to read through those as, uh, as we, we live our lives together but the bottom shelves in particular are covered in D&D books and uh, comics and rule books for mostly miniature games. So it shouldn't really come as a surprise to anyone that I've been to at least one Comic Con. And not only that, but I was going to uh, Comic Con with, which had a toy fest in it as well, and that was brilliant. But it was with some of the people I love most in the entire world. Uh, I have a, a, a group of friends who happen to all be family. Uh, my friend Emma and Ian and their two children, Ben and Fionn. And I was squidged in the back of their car between Ben and Fionn in their booster seats on the way to my first ever Comic Con. And we were pulling out of, um, of a supermarket petrol station having just fueled up for the ride over to Birmingham from Coventry and um, all of a sudden I thought to myself it would just be better it would just be better for everyone in my life if I just wasn't here I wouldn't be a burden to any of them if I were to just vanish and you know I'm sitting in a car with two kids who love me you know to pieces who I've known for most of their lives if not all of them in the case of Fionn I've uh, my, my friend Emma is my best friend in the whole world and she is absolutely fantastic she's the most caring and understanding second most caring and understanding woman I've ever met Mrs Brushstrokes probably tops that list and Ian if you're listening mate you're all right And I'm on my way to Comic Con, to my first ever comic book convention, looking to be able to fill out some of the gaps in my collection, looking forward to seeing some awesome cosplays and maybe some cool board games and things like that, possibly even some celebrities. And all I could think was that the people around me and in my life would be better off without me being there. And do you know what? It went away. I uh, we went to the to the the convention, saw some awesome board games, spotted a couple of celebrities, saw some brilliant cosplays, including a guy who, when I shouted, "Director Fury," 
turned round, looking exactly like Samuel L. Jackson uh, in, in his cosplay there. Quite a few Black Widows and uh, made a couple of, uh, of Katniss Everdeen's smile, despite having never read the books or watched any of the films. Just by shouting out the name of the character when I saw them. Quite a lot of Spider-Men, including a, uh, shall we say, a more body-positive Spider-Man, which was quite interesting. And I very nearly got assimilated on my way into the toilets by a Borg. So, really good day. I found the uh, some of the graphic novels I wanted, got a new board game or two, picked up a, uh, a sticker for a, a point-and-click game from the 90s that no one else had ever heard of in our part, in our little group, and made the people on the... Uh, on the stall selling it squee because I was standing there quoting one of the characters purple tentacle from day of the tentacle and we went about our business and I'd say I had a pretty good day but when we got back I had to think about that moment and it wasn't the first time it had happened it wasn't the um, unfortunately it hasn't been the last yet either but it certainly wasn't the first and I decided to go and talk to the doctor about it and he suggested that I get in touch with uh, some people at a, a team called IAPT and uh, if you happen to live in the UK and you uh, you have any mental illness or anything like that talk to your doctor about IAPT because it's the uh, the NHS mental health wing and they will help you get in touch with a uh, with a counsellor and, and go through your options of treatment and what's going to be best for you to get you back on your feet. But what began then was a sort of what's been what is ongoing really is 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 learning about various different medications, mostly through doing a practical method. And having a little bit of uh, of counselling there and it wasn't for feeling particularly sad I wasn't sitting at home on my own and, and crying myself to sleep every day I was getting out of the house every weekend and going to see people and uh, playing games and painting models and things like that and then all of a sudden I would hit a wall and I couldn't I couldn't get out of bed couldn't get out of bed couldn't be bothered getting dressed. If you looked at my life outside of the house, I was the, the life and soul of the party. If you look at, at my life uh, when I got home, I was embarrassed to have people over because my, my kitchen was filthy. It was full of, um, of dishes and things that hadn't been done for weeks or, or even months in some cases. And when I, um, when I look back over my Facebook, it is absolutely full of uh, the th you know they get the little throwback things coming up, absolutely full of um, posts about it's been a while but I'm going to do some laundry or it's been a while but I'm going to finally do something about all this washing up or tidy up my living room. Um, I had a an inspection from my landlord once, and it took me all of a week to tidy my flat not just because I was out of puff every five minutes and very tired and disinterested in stuff very easily and uh, and find it difficult to push past that but also because um, there was so much to tidy and he had a bit of a look round and was okay with it and off he went now a couple of weeks later he'd lost some paperwork and decided he needed to come round and, and me sign a new contract and he wasn't quite sure if he'd done a, an inspection and didn't trust me to tell him that yes he had so he came around again and he was shocked he actually asked me at one point if I'd been robbed and then followed up with you live like this because the place was was six inches deep in uh, in crap that I would just sort of flung or dropped where it landed and that's what depression looks like for me. And it's what you might find if you go into a depressive house. Uh, especially, you might be surprised by the fact that, you know, they seem okay. But what I was finding, and what I still find, is that I'm very good at keeping up appearances. You know, I've had 
the majority of my adult life I was in uh, I was in retail and you sort of learn one of the first lessons I learned at my first retail job was it doesn't matter if your dog just died the uh, or your grandma's on her deathbed or you know the your girlfriend just dumped you if you're in work you're in work and the customer deserves nothing less than your your full attention and your full energy well it's just automatic for me to do that around people now I've spoken to a few friends with uh, with depression as well and they they talk about the same thing about um, about a mask that you wear to prevent people from from seeing what's really going on and yet at times you're screaming inside your head for someone to notice that something is going on and it's maddening it's absolutely maddening because there's nothing you can do about it you know nobody is a mind reader and we know that because none of us are mind readers but nobody is seeing my pain and I really need them to see my pain and um, why aren't they seeing my pain and all it does is it feeds back into that sense of not being worth anything of, of wanting to just disappear so that you're not bothering people anymore so you've sort of got that that annihilation wish it wasn't suicidal it's very rarely suicidal but just not wanting to be anybody's issue anymore, not wanting to be a problem for anybody, wanting the pain to go away. And um, yeah, that's a feeling that a lot of us with, de with depression have to deal with a lot. And it's, uh, it's not fun. So what would I like you to take away from this? Well, if you feel sad for no reason or you're grieving over something or someone and it's been a while and it's getting in the way of you living your life, I want you to go to your doctors and talk to them about it. And unfortunately, if you happen to live in a country that doesn't have socialised healthcare, that's going to take money. So you have my apologies there I've spoken to at least one young person on Instagram who lives with their uh, with their family and feels that they can't tell them how they're feeling to people like that in that situation I would say find someone in your life that you can tell whether it's a friend or as I say a doctor or a family member anybody a teacher find someone sit them down and tell them that you're not feeling okay because until you do no one's going to know and until no until anybody knows no one's going to be able to help okay to those of you who have a depression diagnosis like me who are perhaps going through um, hard times or who aren't who have found the right pills or the right counsellor but are terrified of one day that dark cloud coming back uh, first of all I'd like to express my solidarity I absolutely understand you because I'm terrified of the same thing um, I'm scared that Mrs Brushstrokes will find out who I really am under all this if I ever get fixed or if I go even further and, and go even more wrong that I'll change to a point where she doesn't want to be around me anymore or where I finally do something stupid as they say and I know it feels that way sometimes but it's not the way this malfunctioning of your brain and whatever it is does not get to win the i refer to it as the monster in my head i've made some posts before about all of us fighting the same dragon and uh and the sad thing being that we all have to do it alone well 
I think that it doesn't get to win. It's my brain, it's my mind, it's my life, and as far as I can, I will control it. And I'd hope that taking a similar mindset can help you. You can be the hero, the knight in shining armour that saves yourself from the dragon. And I know it's hard to fight all the time. And a lot of us are fighting all the time. And it's tiring more than anything else. I feel worn out the majority of the time. And some of that is to do with some other unrelated stuff, like I've got sleep apnea. So I haven't really had a good night's sleep in the last eight years. But depression also takes away that ability to feel refreshed when you sleep because you can rest and rest and rest and your body's still running on a stress response that was built to run away from lions or to fight predators over a few minutes and it's left the switch is turned on for some of us and just left there for years at a time and it just makes you very very tired so i get that you that you're tired and i get that you're sick of fighting and i get that it hurts all the time but in the same way as i said to those those uh, people the young people or anybody really who feels stuck and without anyone to tell make sure that someone in your life knows how you're feeling make sure somebody understands and that you can be yourself around them. Don't keep yourself to yourself if you can stand it. I know some of you are, int are introverts. I happen to be an extrovert with some introverted tendencies. Don't keep yourself to yourself. You're not the burden you think you are. And the people around you wouldn't be around you if they thought you were. So, you know, fight back, even just a little bit. Go and find someone who you can trust and get a hug. It's the best medicine. And knowing that you are supported and you're not alone is so, so valuable. And to those of you out there with, with functioning brains, um, first of all, well done. I don't want to ever sound like I'm bitter towards any of you. Um, this this isn't something I could help and it's not something you can help either you know you have uh, you don't have the same brain chemistry as me you probably hopefully will never feel this bad as uh, as uh, those of us with depression and I genuinely hope that because it's awful and um, but what I'd say to you is do some research if you don't understand. Uh, talk to, to someone that you know who has depression if they're willing to talk to you. And if they're not, come talk to me. I will never ever turn anybody away for for asking genuine questions and wanting to increase their, their knowledge on, on any subject that I, I know anything about. I, uh, I do try to make sure that people understand that they're they should never be scared of, of asking me anything because I'm not going to laugh at you. If you don't know, you don't know. There's stuff I don't know. There's stuff I'll never understand. Um, mostly mathematics, to be honest with you. But, you know, we've all got blind spots in our knowledge and our experience. And the only thing that's ever going to solve and help with those blind spots is if we help each other. So, you know, ask questions, but listen to the answers. And try and, and empathise with the with the people around you. It's a difficult balance to strike. Not treating someone like they're made of eggshells or glass. But at the same time, not expecting too much of them. Uh, not, not showing disappointment when they can't meet the, um, the expectations that you have of somebody with normal functioning brain and normal uh, normal energy levels but I would say 
please try. And hopefully we can find a middle ground where everybody can understand everybody one day. But for now, we are where we are. So this has been the very first Not All Fun and Games. Just a little more serious kind of chat about the the mental health side of things. And hopefully it's been illuminating and you haven't minded listening to me drone on for just shy of half an hour now. Uh, so with that in mind, I want to thank you very much for listening if you have so far. And um, yeah, be kind to yourself and each other and reach out if you need it. Or even if you don't. Bye-bye.